Hello and welcome to UPSC Preparation Simplified. Now, every now and then, very important events occur which actually influence the way UPSC may ask questions to you in your prelims as well as mains. Now, recently, something very interesting has happened. You must have heard about Parker Probe. And today, we are going to understand this Parker Probe and kind of, you know, revelations it will make which can be used from the perspective of UPSC examination, both for prelims and for mains. In this context, we have Mr. Akshara sir. Sir, welcome on board again. Thank you, sir. I hope you are doing well. Must great be having a good time. There is so much of happening in science and technology and especially yes. Parker Probe. Exactly. So, sir, uh, can you inform our students about what is Parker Probe and what it actually reveals? There is a lot of hype, as you said, uh, regarding Parker Probe. And it is, uh, to be honest, it's just the beginning. There, there are a lot many things that is going to be unraveled by this probe uh, you know, in future. So, uh, in a, in a nutshell, when we talk about Parker probe, we know that it's a it's a solar probe, and for the first time, NASA has built a probe that is supposed to touch uh, the uh, the sun's outer atmosphere or the what we call as the sun's corona, mm. and it will go clear uh, nearer to the surface of the sun. So this is basically the largely the objective of uh, Parker probe to reach. But while taking up this journey, it is going to unravel a lot of mysteries that we have uh, about the sun. To be or to be honest, sun is you know we have been looking at the sun since birth. We know that the sun has been there because of the sun. We have life on Earth, life on you know this planet. But there are still a lot of mysteries around the sun revolving. So there are a lot of things that we do not know about the sun. We know that they are there, but we don't. We are not sure that how these things are formed, how these things have given life to our planet, how these things affect life on our planet or affect the physiological conditions on any other planet that, for that matter. So Parker Probe in a nutshell is going to answer all these questions, you know, and uh, all the best to the people at NASA, you know, to find and to make more discoveries in this probe. Now, sir, if I talk about this sun, mm -hmm. the sir. sun is definitely the, the center of our solar system. Sir. Now, sun influences a lot of things on planet Earth and other planets as well. Right. So what are the things that sun influences for mm -hmm. the solar system that we have understood so far? So one thing for sure that we know that sun is the primary source of energy to us and uh, although the origin of life on earth may not have triggered by the sun's, uh, sun might not have contributed in the origin of life but yes it has definitely helped us, in, helped us in sustaining life on earth. So one thing is for sure that if we are looking for any other planet to support life then sun do play a role. It, may, it might be playing an important role and it must be in fact, I'm sorry, I'm, it must be playing an important role in supporting life on any other planet. And at the same time, there are a lot of physiological phenomena that keep happening on the sun, which affects, you know, the modern world that we have here. Like, for example, you might, as you mentioned, that there are a lot of things that affect us. So there are mentions of solar winds, corona mass ejection, mm -hmm. solar flare. These are the few events which occur on the sun surface, occur around the sun, but they largely affect our modern technology. They, they affect our electric grid, they affect our satellites. So there's a huge influence of sun, not only in our survival, but also in our day-to-day -day working life. Now coming back to the Parker Probe. Yes. So Parker Probe uh, has been a, a technological marvel as well, in more ways than one. Sir. First, it's, it has used the gravitational pull of another planet yes, exactly. to actually move in that direction. Mm -hmm. And there's one thing which actually mm -hmm. bothers me a little. I always mm -hmm. heard that sun is very hot. So exactly. how this entire thing is happening where it is going to almost touch the corona? That's true, sir. <laughs> when you talk about the sun's outer uh, outer layer, that is the sun's corona, it is approximately two two million uh, you know uh, degree Celsius hot. Now, when something is so hot, we know that the entire planet Earth would melt. Mm -hmm. But how it is possible that Parker has done something that they have been able to touch the sun's corona, and there they in fact have an objective to go even nearer yeah. to the sun's surface. So. In order to understand this, we have to first appreciate how the heat is generally transferred between bodies. So we have three methods of transferring heat, conduction, convection and radiation. For conduction and convection, we require a medium, medium yes, course. to transfer heat. And radiation is something that happens through light or happens through electromagnetic radiation, what we say. So we have to first appreciate one fact that between the sun and earth, there is no medium as such. Hmm. So light is able to propagate easily. But sound cannot, because mm. sound requires a medium to travel. Of course. So as sound cannot propagate, so that we know that medium is not there. Mm. So when we talk about radiation heating, only an object when it is facing the uh, facing the radiation, that radiation may affect us. Mm. But all the other all the other uh, sides, or even if the uh, you know behind the object, the radiation will not have any larger impact. So what they have done in Parker probe. In fact, this is the reason why the Parker probe has been delayed for so long, although the plan came out almost 50-60 years ago. 
So the reason why uh, you know it has it has been delayed because they had to first create a thermal protection shield. Mm. They call it the TPS, and um, it was basically designed by the John Hop Hopkins uh, you know lab of NASA, and uh, they have developed something called the thermal thermal protection sheet, which is basically a reinforced carbon carbon sheet. It's a composite material. And the quality of this material is that whatever radiation it is going to face, only that side of the radiation will be facing the high temperature and only that side will get hot. Mm -hmm. The hind side of that particular sheet, it will maintain a very low temperature, somewhere close to 80 degrees to 300 degrees at the max, which is comfort comfortable enough for many electronic gadgets to work. Okay. So they have used a very nice engineering and they have, they have understood the concept. All, of course, they have, they have applied these concepts of heat transfer very, very uh, you know, uh, uh, innovatively so that they are able to protect the probe even when it goes closer and closer to the sun. So you have used this term carbon carbon sheet. Yes sir. So is it something which is like carbon sheet of graphene or what it is? Can you help us? Sir, uh, basically NASA has not revealed that what exactly the structure of that carbon is. But we can we can precisely say that considering the properties of hexagonal planar structures of graphene mm -hmm. or uh, graphite for that matter, it should be having those hexagonal planar structures only because it has a very high thermal conductivity for that matter. And it can also be used as a composite material and will eventually also have good insulation mm -hmm. power. So uh, yes, it should be having those structures. This is what one can say. But how exactly they have used it? How they have been able to reinforce it with some composite? That is that nobody can say because NASA has not revealed that. As okay. Well. Now every mission uh, so, which is done by NASA or any other space agency has some objectives. So what are the objectives of this Parker probe in that sense? So uh, Parker probe is having wider objectives. Although the primary objective is uh, inspired by Dr. Eugene Parker's his own paper on solar winds. So as we know that solar winds are there, mm. sun is losing mass every moment, every second mm. and these solar winds, they are today called as space weather phenomena, solar winds are coronal mass ejection. Mm. But unfortunately we, we know that these things are there but we do not know how are they being formed mm. and from where are they being formed. So if, when it comes to, suppose like today humans are, uh, humans are aspiring to find life on other planets as well, mm -hmm. life in a different solar system at, at mm -hmm. the same time. So when we try to find life on a different solar system, we have to first understand that how suns activities are affecting our life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then only we can try to relate it on in some other, we can try to apply it on some, any other exoplanet. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the Parker's objective, it will try to study the solar winds, how are they formed, where are they formed and how they, how they influence the nearby coronal temperature. As we know that the corona is hotter than its subsequent or its uh, other layers like photosphere and chromosphere and nobody has been able to answer this question so far. So we know that it is hotter, but we do not know the reason. Mm. Maybe it may be possible that with the help of the discoveries made by Parker Probe, we may come closer. Mm. If not, we find the answer, but we will definitely come closer to the we reasons. One step in the yes, direction. Yes. And on top of that, there is something called solar storms, which mm. are actually called coronal mass ejection. Mm. For them also, we don't have any idea. We, we only know that they exist, but we can't predict their timing. We don't know how are they formed. Although they are considered to be very similar to solar winds, but they are of higher intensity, we can say. Mm -hmm. So Parker Probe is also programmed to, you know, to, uh, uh, you know, study these coronal mass ejections if they happen by the time the Parker Probe is there till 2025. Now, one thing that which we will discuss, we were discussing actually uh, when off camp, of course, that there is an importance of mm -hmm. sun and then there is an importance of atmosphere. So we can also reveal why some plants do not have an atmosphere. Exactly. So can you throw some light on that? That how this entire thing actually works and then how Parker Probe is going so, to explore that as well. So, uh, actually, uh, when, when, when we study this idea of solar winds, we know that these solar winds, they are mostly in the form of ions, hmm. hydrogen and helium ions. So we can consider hydrogen ions as same as protons and helium ions as double protons, you can hmm. say. So these ions, they are ejected at a very high speed from the sun's surface. Sun, we know that sun is losing mass every second. So these ions, when they travel with a strong magnetic field across the solar system, they also interact with our magnetic field. Mm -hmm. So thankfully we have the Earth's magnetic shield, we have the Earth's magnetic field with, that prevents the entry of these particles into the Earth's surface. So of course the satellites are quite vulnerable to these, but the people or our scientific payloads here, they are protected because of the Earth's magnetic field. But when you talk about other, other planets like Mars, when you talk about Moon, why Moon doesn't have an atmosphere, why Mars atmosphere is thinning, why other planets, how are their magnetic field is being affected. By study of solar winds, it may be able to help us to find out the reason, exact reason okay. that why the Martian atmosphere is thinning, why moon doesn't have an atmosphere because we know mm -hmm. solar winds do play a role. Mm -hmm. But how exactly are they playing a role? Mm -hmm. We will be able to, uh, we to learn with the help of this Parker probe. So, wonderful sir. sir. So I hope that this Parker probe uh, mm -hmm. solves a lot of problems for humanity as such. 
and since we are looking for uh, extraterrestrial life also mm -hmm. uh, as a system or colonizing other planets as well at the same time mm -hmm. that is one of the initiatives yes. of the humankind sir. so i hope that this particular mission gives a clarity on that thank you sir thank you for sharing all this wisdom mm -hmm. now one more thing i would like to uh, mm -hmm. you know get your opinion if i have to define this particular uh, parker probe as a question for prelims and question mm -hmm. for mains so how do you think that upsc might use it i think sir it would be a very valid question in the preliminary exam mm -hmm. because upsc already appreciates innovations done by not just india but by, but by other other organizations as well so it would be a very valid question in the preliminary exam it can be asked in relation with the solar weather uh, space weather ph phenomena that we just now mentioned about solar winds and uh, coronal mass ejection that they can simply ask that they can ask to match the following question regarding the parker probe mm -hmm. and how they can match about uh, match its objectives there can be a question regarding simply the objectives of parker probe mm -hmm. they can be asked again very interesting thing because it is the fastest man made object ever been created mm -hmm. so there can be a question that parker probe was recently used you know and uh, they can mention that what are the points they can mention a couple of points and we have to uh, you know find the right group of points in that case so there's a huge possibility that upsc can interplay with a lot of things mm -hmm. because the plan itself is from 2018 to 2025 mm -hmm. it's a seven year long project mm -hmm. so when there's a project of seven year long there's a, there's a huge opportunity of questions that upsc can create mm -hmm. and not only just one they they may be able to create it multiple times mm -hmm. and if something something significant is discovered eventually by this by the time the break sprint happens then i think students should not be ignoring that mm -hmm. you know because if something very significant happens then either way upsc may find a may find a way of inducting those things in the in the question paper sir thank you sir so i hope that you have this clarity now about uh, this probe and when you are going to study this particular probe you need to understand that there are dimensions which are interrelated like solar winds which sir has already clearly mentioned mm -hmm. so understand this thing in this holistic picture and create the knowledge for yourself which you can utilize from the perspective of prelims and mains I hope that you have now clarity, you have an understanding, and from the entire team of Rao Zaghi, we wish you all the very best. Stay tuned for more videos.